Yo, Human Behavior Mastery Podcast. I'm here um, without Mr. Shans, but I'm here with another really, really amazing friend of mine, uh, Connie S. Falls. And the S. Systems. What's up, Connie? Hey, how you doing? What's happening? Man, I am so happy to be here. I'm so glad that you're out here, too. That makes me so happy. <laughs> All right, so listen, what... Um, what weird human behavior have you noticed in me this week well i mean whoever oh gosh they're all me they're they're 100 percent all me actually me and my d were talking and we're talking about you know where people think that there are um what's the term deja vu and Uh, you feel like you've seen something before or whatever versus us we're like no i i know i've seen that before i know this (laughs) process and i'm like yeah we might be a little crazy but i think that uh our craziness is what makes us so dope it does. It makes us. It makes us unique, right? I think it. It adds flavor to uh, our days, our lives. Um, I definitely appreciate uh, the quirks, the Connie quirks. Thank you. Right, uh, Connie, probably the most kind, fun loving. Connie's Aww. a hippie in real life. I'm definitely like I, a hippie. I really think that she's a modern day hippie. She was born in the wrong generation or something. I definitely was. <laughs> so for the for the 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 audio listeners, right? Because um, for our special guests, we want to make sure that we you know we're talking about the assessment behavior. So Connie is what she well tell them tell us first a little bit about yourself, your business, what the S is about, and then we could pivot into. Awesome. So I am Connie S. Falls, and the S is for systems. I spent the last 16 years creating operational systems. What does that mean? Policy, process, procedures, workflows, all the boring documentation that allows you to have a sustainable business. So most people don't understand. They just see systems. They think about computers. They think about tech. But they don't think about the operational part. And then when I say, oh, well, have you ever worked a job? Yes. Uh, when you got hired, did you go through a process? Yes. Did they give you documentation that you had to sign? Yes. And they trained you on said documentation. Yes. We create all of that. Mm. So that journey has been amazing. It started from writing business plans to doing coaching and consulting to really understanding what the biggest problems are for us and our community, especially when it comes to small businesses and new entrepreneurs is we don't have any processes documented. Right. We don't have anything that we've ever said. This is how you do it to be able to train somebody else. And because we also have the mindset of, you know what, I could just do it myself. You end up overworked, you end up overwhelmed, and then you end up looking crazy like I was. (laughs) So I wanted to make sure that I built a business around taking care of people's mental health and making sure that you don't have the overwhelm that leads to anxiety and depression and triggers my ADHD. So that all rooted from my own mental health self. Yeah, I like that you said that. Um, at the time that we're recording this now, Mental Health Awareness Month is is here, is, is brewing. Um, and even before the pandemic, but definitely in the pandemic, we started to see how much people suffered. Um, and we, we've become, as a collective, as a society, just more, we're having a conversation more. In our community, we're having a conversation more. And, you know, like I was telling you before we started rolling, I'm seeing a lot more about how black women are thriving, right? Black women are um, are at more educated than before. They're starting more businesses than before. They're making more money than before. But at the same time, with that success, with that progress, there's still the... I'm res- tired. Yes, there's, I'm <laughs> tired. There's a responsibility of still being a mother, still being a wife, still managing a household, still managing a life. And I wanted to have the conversation sort of at the intersection of all of those things, mental health, being a mommy, um, being have running a very successful business. Um, and I think you're the perfect person oh. to have this conversation with. Thank right. You. So for those who are listening uh, as part of the audio experience, Connie's assessment is very interesting. When I first seen Connie's assessment, I was like, yo, she is a secret weapon like i i really everybody needs connie everybody needs connie in their business right so connie is a 17 she's a 17 d she has a 81 i she has a 77 s and a 77 c so connie's very thoughtful very intentional very methodical she um 
with that high eyes. She does everything with good vibes. I told you she's a hippie. She got good vibes. She's smiling all the time. She's cheery. She makes people feel good. She makes the energy light up in the room. Then the S and the C, right? Being both for 77, she likes to take her time. She's process driven, um, but she also operates with a spirit of excellence. So she takes her time and has high standards. When you put all of that in one person, you literally have something that transforms the culture of a business uh, in the room, but also on paper and the bottom line. Um, but she's also like a really great human being just as a Aww. friend. And, you know, I've seen her as a mother and like, I just want to, uh, commend you on Thank just you. being a great person and, and the things that you do. But, um, talk to us a, a bit about how you got into the work. I know you mentioned the ADHD and all of those things and your challenges with mental health. So how did you get started in the work that you're doing? Um, what was sort of the turning point for you? And uh, then we can kind of get into where you are now and the things that are happening. Awesome. So because I was the kid that, you know, back in the day, you know, I'm a little older, but back in the day, they used to ask, what do you want to be when you grow up? And it was like teacher, police officer. Well, what were the other things? A firefighter. Firefighter. Yeah. President. President of the United States. Right. <laughs> like that was it. You got five options. And I'm like, I don't want to do any of those. I've grown up all of my life without having an answer to what I wanted to be. And I've tried everything. I've worked in all fast food. I've worked in retail. I've worked in construction. I've had the construction hat on with the boots, with the, the falls on the back of it, with all the glowing letters. <laughs> so literally every industry you could possibly think of, but every job I've ever had, my mind already is trying to process, how can this be better? Why are mm. they doing it this way? And so because I'm not book smart, right? Air quotations for the audio people. Because I'm not traditionally book smart, I was never thinking how I could impact anybody else's business or their life at all. I'm just a funny, fun person with high spirits that had all the trauma when she was young. So for me, because I didn't have a direction, I never looked for a direction. I was like, this is just, I'll just be a hippie. I'll go get a tent. I'm going to live on the, <laughs> I'm going to live on the side of the beach. It's going to be great. I'm going to eat fresh fruit. Again, I'm from California. So you know, I'll go on the side of the road, grab some oranges and some cherries, and I'm going to live the best life. Um, the only problem with that is that as you get older and you see people going the direction and the path that they're called to go and you're left behind, that becomes another piece of trauma that goes into your head feeling mm. like you're not good enough, right? So now you couple the fact that I was already diagnosed as a kid with ADHD. So I was one of the little riddling kids back when it turned you into a zombie. Then you add on watching everybody else move along and do so great in whatever they were looking to do. So that adds in depression. Then my mom was murdered when I was young. And then there was trauma physically that happened, like all of these things. But I'm always Connie with a smile. And now I'm Connie with no direction, right? So as I get older and I'm starting to see everywhere I go, I have solutions for people's problem that for me is common sense. Well, why didn't you think about it that way? Well, you know, if you just did this and then I'd start writing things out. And then by the time I got to college, they were like, yeah, that's called a change management plan that you just wrote. No, what you just wrote is actually called a standard operating procedure. Yeah, there's a that's a that's a process. Yeah, but you're, I was like, oh, that's this is the thing. Just answering people's issues and finding what's wrong. People people pay you to do that. And uh, by the time I got into one of my jobs and realized that y'all are trying to kill me, y'all got me coming in here at five o'clock in the morning. I'm leaving at nine o'clock at night. I started getting migraines really bad, and I finally crashed my car on the side of the road. And before I called the police, I called my job. I was like. Put my boss on the phone. I ain't never coming home, right? So <laughs> never went back. I didn't go get pins, pictures, anything out of the office. And I was like, I have to find something to do. And my little sister talked to me. She was 11 at the time. Mm -hmm. And she was like, hey, uh, so it's been like a year and you haven't had a job and you're sleeping on the couch. So of our dad's house, right? I'm a mm -hmm. whole adult there back at home. What are you going to do? I was like, I don't know what to do. She's like, you know how to. What do you know how to do that people pay you for? I was like, I only know how to write business plans. She's like, people pay for those? I was like, yeah. And I started calling my friends and asking them to write business plans. But what I realized even in that journey is that even if you have a plan, most people still don't know how to execute. Mm. Right? So for me, because my brain moves so fast with my ADHD, I don't have any Ritalin. I have no Adderall. I'm like, man, you guys aren't thinking this fast. You don't hear all these lines of thought that are happening. In it. I'm solving five problems for you right here while you're talking to me. So I already know the answer before so I interrupt people when they're talking to me because I'm like 
I already have the solution for it. So for me, realizing that I had all of these solutions, not just because I retained a lot of information, but because my brain processes information so quickly that people will pay for that. So from there, we've gone on the journey of I could write the business plan, but y'all don't know how to execute it. I'm going to come in and help you execute it. Okay, great. But you don't have any team members and you actually need people to hire. Okay, great. We need to start talking about operational systems and then taking all of that together and really understanding because I'm thousands of businesses in at this point. Mm. Here's where the real problem is in our community. Ain't nobody ever told us to write things down. Actually, they tell us you don't need to write that down. Think about your grandma Green's recipe, right? You think about uh, Nana's pound cake and tea cake recipes. You don't write those down. Those are off of the top of your head. So because I learned that that we are innately trained, I say it's our grandma's fault, but we love you, grandma, rest in peace, <laughs> that we never learned these processes, but that is literally the entire journey. So because the things that people would think mental health, oh, ADHD, you can't sit down, you can't fidget, I can sit totally still. But this brain oh, I already know what I'm making for dinner tonight. I'm thinking of the things, ingredients I have to pick up. I'm like, oh my God, I forgot to change the tire on the Jeep. All of these things are process, processing at once while I'm talking to you in the middle of this interview. That goes amazing doing a strategy session when it comes to building somebody's operational systems. You tell me what your problem is. I can kick that out because I've already finished solving all this stuff because I've seen the back end of thousands of businesses for the last 16 years. So yeah, that's that's been the journey. I like that. So for somebody listening, uh, you may be a mother, right? You may be running a business um, at, you know, it may be just starting or you may have, you're in the middle of a breakout year and you're trying to make sense of everything. And you may be struggling with depression or anxiety or ADHD. I just want to like make it obvious and state the obvious that it's possible because Connie just said, and I know Connie, and she's about everything that she's saying right now, right? So one is possible, but talk, because I want to give actual, like, tangible advice, like actionable advice for, for people. How did you take what people would say is a burden and turn it into something that you use to be a blessing for people, right? The, the ADHD and, like, how, how are you able to make that work for you? So one, I was scared to even say that I had ADHD. I was, I was scared to tell people because of what I do for a living. Mm. So social media wise, I just brought it up. I think last year and we talked about it before I even yeah. said anything um, because there's a stigma that goes along with it. Right. So that, that fear, especially as an adult, like you a whole grown woman, you got ADHD. That's for kids. Like, no, it's not. First of all, it's not a, it's not a, problem it makes it more impressive to me honestly like when yeah. you took i was like say tell the people this because it it's even more of a testament that you're able to function at the level that you're able to function consistently over time and you have literally transformed people's businesses and in turn transformed people's lives by being able to put these systems in place and document and all of this stuff like personally you know, as a high D, I'm a, I'm going to get it done. But I I've been much more intentional and deliberate. Like I hear Connie in the back. You write write that down. Like, so it's a blessing. But there's somebody listening that may not feel like that. And They're, and it's not. It it doesn't always feel like that. There mm -hmm. are some days where I'm like, I wish I could just hear one thought. I I look at people and they're like, Oh, I'm just meditating. I'm just sitting. I'm like, What are you thinking about? And I'm like, okay, I'm thinking about everything from tacos to playing jacks. You remember when you were a kid playing jacks? And did you know that I was like, I'm processing this much information. So I look at folks and I'm like, man, I wish that I had the fortitude to just one thing, right? Um, so it doesn't always feel great. Most days it just feels okay and it feels overwhelming, right? Mm. So especially when you're talking about women and then specifically talking about black women. So we are not diagnosed at all when we're children talk about it because what ends up happening is either we try and overachieve or we mask which is what i'm excellent at doing so i could be having a whole total entire breakdown on the inside but this is what we're trained to do you always make sure you do this you always smile you make sure that everything's okay because your job is a nurturer so we're not worried about how your mental health is make sure that everybody else is okay so we're trained to do that mm -hmm. innately right so for those people with adhd and it's something that was a bad stigma that was attached to it for many years. I'm not going to go around telling people that I have that. 
So now when you think about black women who, as you get older, either you're masking it because you're really, really smart. So one of my, one of my friends who was the first person to really help me understand ADHD as an adult, her name is Latoya. She's the VP over at Dell Mm -hmm. to let you know how far you can get with ADHD. Right. So watching how she, watching how she moved and being able to set boundaries. Right. But once she understood that she had it, she started putting the boundaries in place, but first you have to be able to understand that you have it. So because we aren't diagnosed when we're children awareness. Yeah. You, you never think about it later on. So the first time I said something about ADHD on my, on my Instagram page, my DMS were in shambles. I could talk about systems all day long. I'll get two DMS. I probably have 50, 60 DMS that day. And they were back to back men, women, ages, elderly, all the way down to young folks. Oh my God, is that what that means? I, I hear voices and it's not like I hear voices like it's somebody else where it's like schizophrenia, where I hear somebody else's voice tell me to do bad things. I hear my own voice and, but it's so much stuff going on and I can't think and I lose things and it was right here and then it was gone. Like there was a laptop and then you'll look back on the next scene, no laptop would be there and I don't know how it went away. So all of these people flooded my DM like I never heard anybody that looks like us have the conversation. So first the awareness and then going to go get checked. And I know we don't always like to go to the doctor. Hmm. However, when you're talking about your mental health, that is going to be one of the best decisions that you make. Because once you're able to say that this is what it is, now I know what I can do to be able to help me. And it's not that you're just some crazy person. I know I always say crazy, but not a crazy person. You just literally lack a chemical in your brain called dopamine. I just have a little less than everybody else. So what that does is that affects your executive function which helps you be able to execute tasks Mm -hmm. which is totally opposite of what I do for a living (laughs) (laughs) literally that's exactly the opposite but I say that because once I identified and said okay Connie you already know you have ADHD bro what 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 can we do what boundaries can I put in my personal life what policies can I put in my business to make sure that they can run without me and on my personal side what can I do to make sure that other people can support me Yo, what's goody fam? Listen, I know, I know, I'm going to let you get back to the episode, but I wanted to take a minute to let you know about the Human Behavior Mastery course. Yes, we have a course that we put together for coaches, consultants, corporate leaders, and entrepreneurs. I know you're listening to the pod and it's all of this numbers and the, the adaptive and the natural, the D, the I, the attributes. We put together a comprehensive course to walk you through exactly how to understand each one of the personality types, each one of the values, and we're going to show you exactly how to get the most out of each type, what things you need to avoid, what environments to put you in, and what pieces to put around you to be successful. So if you're looking at taking your business, your life, or your relationship to the next level, make sure you go check out the Human Behavior Mastery course. Back to the episode. That's I love that you just said that. Uh, I'm really big on awareness, right? I always say awareness breeds choice, right? You can't choose something you aren't aware of, right? So before you became aware of the ADHD, how were things for you? Uh, So I, because they convinced me as a kid after we got off the Ritalin stuff, they're like, yeah, it's ADHD, it's no big deal. Then they traumatized me telling me this is so bad and you're, it's evil. I'm like, oh, I don't have that anymore. I'm just not smart. Mm. I'm lazy. It, everything, it's negative, right? Because my mind isn't focused. I'm looking at everybody else in the class during these tests and I'm on looking at the SATs. Like I spelled falls and I forgot one of the L's in your own, in my own name. Like I, what are you talking about? Y'all are filling this stuff out and y'all getting out. I'm, I'm like, so I felt crazy on the inside. I felt very alone. And I actually did, you know, going forward, I actually created a, a group for entrepreneurs called uh, the squirrel crew yep. inside that the first, the first webinar that I did, I said, tell me the things that you felt about yourself or the things that other people called you. I was bawling my eyes out after that call. I remember you remember you that? Spoke, you, yeah. You told me it was the most emotional thing, stupid, lazy, um, worthless, these are things that people have been called because I can't remember things because I because I lose stuff so easily or I get distracted. I may walk into a room and forget things. And so where most people are like, yeah, I forget my keys, too. No, it's totally different because we're talking about a lack of executive function where I can't you can't be saying, oh, I'm lazy versus I have ADHD paralysis where I physically my body just will not move because my mind is so overwhelmed with thoughts. 
not knowing and being able to call it and being aware. Name it, right? And exactly. that's the importance of awareness and understanding because you'll be believing something about yourself that's not actually true. Exactly. Right? Somebody will make you believe something about yourself and you'll take it and run with it not knowing. So that's the importance of us being able to to put name and put language because that's the beginning of us starting to do research and learning, okay, why do I do this thing? And because mental health, mental health is really not a thing in our community, but it needs to be. And I'm glad that we're having a conversation because so many of us are struggling with this stuff. I used to, I mean, even myself, I would always be like, I'm always, like people would make fun of the fact that, why are you so tense or your, your eyes are always scanning I'd be like, nah, I'm just on point. Like, I grew up in the Bronx. Like, you just, you got to be aware. I didn't realize that that's a form of anxiety. Yes. You don't, but it's normalized. You don't think that you, Yeah. no, you, when I start to feel my body get tense, that's anxiety building up. Yes, it is. But it's not, like, we can't say I got anxiety because then you look soft or you look crazy or something is wrong. And I it's love like, my up north people. Y'all just don't want to be soft at all. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's real. Mm -hmm. So now that you understand that, it's like, oh, okay. It gives you, that awareness gives you access to a whole bunch of choices. So you become aware that you have ADHD. Now you said, okay, what do I need to do to be functional? Like talk about that transitional period of when you became aware and when you started to put things in place, when you started to transform into Systems Bay. So I'll be honest with you. Business-wise, you cannot out-systematize me. That is my jam, period. Personal, trash. Absolutely awful. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what I had to do personal, because my personal life would affect my business. So on the days where I physically cannot get out of bed, where my body will not cooperate, nothing's wrong with me as far as, like, everything works, my limbs work, but my brain is so crowded and clouded, I cannot get out of bed. My business still has to run, mm. but when I can't, so I had to work on the personal side first so that I can even get out the bed to go and create business systems. So I am trained at the master's degree in organizational management and blah, 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 all the stuff that goes along with that. But on the personal side, that's what was holding me back because that is personal and business and personal are two different things. And your business is not your baby. It's not your baby. Because then you get that attachment and then you get the anxiety when things aren't going on. And that goes down a whole different pathway. So for me, when I was like, okay, ADHD, what are we going to do with that? I went to a therapist first and I've been in therapy all of my life. I've been in therapy since I was 11 when my mom was killed. So mm. I'm a consistent therapy person. The, how does that make you feel? Do you want to talk about it today? I've been dealing with that forever. So my first thought was, okay, let me ask these questions. Cause I know the routine. I've been to therapists all my life. How am I feeling? Yeah, I feel anxious. I, do I feel depressed? You know what? No, let me go to a professional. Let them ask me these questions and pull the information from me. And they're like, oh, yeah, this is what it is. So you could either get on medication or, you know, you could put these different practices in place. And I'm like, yeah, neither one of those are going to work for me in this season. So what I decided to do was do an assessment of my personal life. What are the things? And literally, I would walk around with a journal and because anxiety is crippling, right? ADHD is overwhelming. Anxiety is crippling. So when something would trigger me and I could feel my heart crush, like literally like it would stop and it would feel like somebody's crushing my chest. Mm. What was that thing? What was that memory that popped up in my head? What was that mistake? Because ADHD, you have a continuous recorder that's going on in your head of all the stuff that you have to do. Anxiety, that, that, that recorder that's playing all day is telling you every mistake you've ever made. So now I have both of these running at the same time. Here go all your mistakes and here are all the tasks that you're behind on. They're both running. So I had to say, okay, great. What are the things that are triggering, triggering, triggering both of these thoughts and what can I do about it? Mm. So if this thought triggers this, what am I going to think of instead when I have this? If, if this task makes me feel overwhelmed, who can I get to do this? Okay, great. So cleaning the house. I dread it. I don't want to do laundry. I don't want to wash dishes. I don't want to do any of this. I don't want to do anything. Who can do this the way I want it done? So the first housekeeper had come in and I was like, oh, this is the best thing ever. 
But she hid everything. I don't know where my underwear are. Where are my bras? I haven't seen anything. The dishes are, they put the dishes where the pots are. Girl, this is crazy. You know what? I didn't train you how to do it. Went back and tried to train her on how to everything. She still put things. And I'm like, you know what? Let me write this down for you. Mm. And I was like, oh, look at me. This is what I do for people in their business. I have to have a system of life. So that's when I started documenting the things that I did that created that crushing feeling, that created that overwhelm. And everything that did that, I either delegate, I document it, and then I delegate it, or I decide it that, yeah, when this happens, it's going to be during this block of time. This is my time block, and I'm going to set a timer because that triggers ADHD people to give you some dopamine, and I'm going to do it between four and five, and I'm going to knock it all out. <laughs> Got to turn off my phone because you get distracted. But that was the literal process. And the trigger for that on my personal side um, was realizing and watching my daughter. Mm. So she's my little ADHD baby as well. And I just, she had the hyperactive side. So she never walked. Like when I say never walked, her first steps were running, chasing a dog. Like she got up off the floor and booked it after this dog. We were like, oh, snap. And then she would sit back down and then she would get up and she would run and she ran. I'm talking about Forrest Gump, full, Forrest Gump, <laughs> full running all of her life. And then she would play really fast and her mind. And I'm like, oh my God, this is probably what I look like, but that's what I feel like on the inside. Mm. And one day she's running in circles. I'm talking about full out. And she stopped and she was like, mommy, my brain feels like scrambled eggs. And I'm like, me too. Hence the book. That so watching her do, from. that's where it came from. Mm -hmm. So, so watching her move like that and see that um, she's processing stuff. She's very, very smart, but choo -choo 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 -choo, that's how I feel on the inside. I need to be able to help her, but I have to help me first. That whole, make sure you put your mask on before you put it on your kids. I'm like, bro, I can't even help you. Cause I, girl, I feel you. I feel like scrambled eggs too in my personal life. So I literally had to do all the documentation delegate everything out that I didn't want to do. And then I was able to start focusing, but watching her was my trigger for my personal life. Again, with the business side, she was probably five, four or five at the time. And, um, I'm working, I'm making all the money. Come on, black moms. I'm, I'm taking care of my babies. Uh -uh, we're going to have generational wealth. We're going to make sure everything is good. They're not going to have to worry about anything. I'm going to pass this business down to my baby because I'm rich now. I work with the government contracts. I work with all the celebrities and athletes and high functioning entrepreneurs. I'm doing it, honey. That is what I'm doing. I'm a <laughs> good mom. I'm a PTA mom. I'm the classroom mom. I'm at every single oh, meeting. Brother. I'm at all the games. I'm doing all of the things. Am I sleeping? Not really, but that's okay because I'm excited because I'm going and it's giving me all this dopamine. And I'm a great mom because I'm doing all of this from home. So my daughter can stay home on some days with me and she can sit on the couch or run around in a circle. And it's great. I'm a great mom. And one day we're sitting on the couch and I'm talking about, I'm getting to it. I got the phone. I got the laptop. I am rocking and rolling. Right. And she was like, mommy, like, yes. She was like, I have a question and we always tell the truth. Right which is one of our policies and boundaries in the house. And I was like, yes, we always tell the truth. Like, do you like that more than you like Ashley? I was like, like what? She's like that. Like this? It's like, yes. No, why would you say that? Well, you hold it more than you hold Ashley. Mm -hmm. And that, which was my phone in my hand, that too. No, I don't. No, I don't. I'm a great mom. I brought cupcakes. I know all the kids' birthdays yeah, in the that's class. A, that's a gut punch I'm, right there. I'm, a, I'm not so realizing that I'm a financial phenomenon, but I'm a family failure. On that day, I was like, yeah, no, nah, uh -uh, get somebody else to do it. What are things in my business that I'm taking on, that I'm overwhelmed and I'm tired and I'm exhausted, but I'm making all the money, baby? All the coins. <laughs> I don't care about none of these coins when my daughter is looking at me as a failure. Now she doesn't say it that way, but this is what, this is what failure looks like. Mm -hmm. And there are so many parents. And, and again, I'm talking specifically to black moms right now. Yep. If that's okay. Um, Please do. Because we feel like we have to be everything to everybody and we have nothing less left for ourselves. So I had zero left for me, but I clearly had zero left for her too. So even though I was there, I wasn't present. Two different things. I, we in the same building, but yeah, it's, it's it's being present, but also participating. Yeah, right. Those are two, and I've had similar moments 
you know, with my children where you have one of those, like, it knocks all the wind out of you where you're like, like, this is what I'm doing it for. But it's almost like I'm sacrificing. It's a, it's a, entrepreneurship is crazy as, crazy enough as it is. People don't understand what it is, but to juggle that and the expectation of a father is, yeah, go get the money. You may miss this stuff. Cool. But a mother, you're still expected to nurture and to take care of a child and to to do all of the mommy things and you're going to get a bag on top of that. And I thought I was doing great. No, I'm well, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I think that's like where does that come from? Right? This the 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 societal norm. Like you've already you've already broken out of the stratosphere, you've already broken out of the mold, but now you're still dealing with the same uh, social norms and the same judgments, right? And this this weird balancing act that is causing more and more stress. Yep. Um, and I, I heard a lot of things in what you were sharing. One is the success you were having in business, you just didn't leave it there, right? It, was, mm-hmm. it wasn't compartmentalized. You kind of looked like, okay, this is working over here. How do I apply that to my personal life. Yes. Right. You're creating generational wealth and that in and of itself is a traumatic thing for black people. Yep. <sighs> we knew to this. Generational wealth is traumatic. Cause it's not something that we're familiar with and it's not something we have healthy paradigms and conversations around. So, but it's, it, it sounds like you've used systems to heal, right? Absolutely. Not only not only quell and put fires out in the business, but to heal and to create structure and healing in the family. Absolutely, and I, and I think for that, really recognizing what's important. So people are always like, "Oh, I want to be able to find balance. I want to find balance." You'll never find balance. You can find a flow, mm-hmm. right? But balance is just not going because there's no way that my daughter is more important than my business. But today on what I have to do on my schedule, I can't make the softball game. Mommy has to go to this conference, go and speak. So I can't balance what that is, but I have to flow with it. Like, hey, and communicate like our kids are not stupid. We have brilliant children out here in these streets. Me being able to communicate with her and say, hey, so this is mommy's schedule. Right. Let me show you what mommy has to do today and then we'll schedule in time for whatever, whatever. Or here's our time. So help me schedule in when I'm going to work on this day. Right. So what was important to me is that while I'm on this journey of making sure that I have all the time, Connie only wants to do two, three things. I want to travel the world and drink champagne on yachts and I (laughs) I want to travel the world with my baby. I want to drink champagne on yachts with my friends and I want to be booed up on the beach with somebody's son. Mm hmm. Other than that, you don't hear nothing about writing no SOPs. You don't hear anything about no workflows in there. But I can't get to that space if I don't have the operational systems in place. So the the thing that's been important to me is that while I'm on this journey of finding my own internal peace, while I'm making sure that I'm keeping in check the depression, which praise God is gone. Thank you, Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, but even with anxiety and with ADHD, if you need the medication for it, awesome. If you if you decide not to do that, awesome. But you first have to be able to identify that that's where the problems are. You have to identify that this is what the diagnosis is. So that way you can be aware and that way you can have access. So even our conversation, I want to say it's been three years now, when we first did the DISC assessment and you were like, yo, this is crazy. This is like, oh, my God. And I'm like, okay, let me read it to be able to understand how that really applies. And how do I put a system based around that? So knowing that when it comes to other people's businesses and when I tell you, to give you your flowers, that was so life changing for me because I had I feel like I've done disc assessments forever. Or people are like, "Oh, let me do one." Or, "Hey, they got a magazine." But the way you explained it and articulated it for me, it was customized for me to understand that, yo, my D people would look at me and think, "Oh, your D is probably through the roof. You make decisions. All the rich people go to you and give them, you all their secrets and access to their entire world. So clearly you have to be a D. You probably want them boss bees. You, you go home and you wear the pants outside and inside. And I'm like, when I get home, I don't want to make any decisions. I don't, I don't want to do any of that. So I just have taken that to be like, oh, kind of just passive. No, that's really a trait that I have as a human. And how does that play out as a difference between my home life and my business life? And then the I and the S and the C, like the S and C being the same, 
you like you literally explained why all of these things made me who I am. And I was able to take that and go stand on it and say, no, this isn't just some fly by night. This is what I'm made of as a person. Mm -hmm. How does this disc assessment actually help me in my personal life? And how does it help me in my business? And from there, I'm able to identify what roles fit me and what does not. Now, I can make decisions in the business all day long. But when it comes to me going home, where is the man that's there that's going to say, this is what we finna do, baby? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so grateful for all of my friends, you and my D and Marcus Y and everybody where on those days where Connie can't make a decision for herself that I have you guys to be able to call and say, so I have these two options and I'm stuck that you guys can help me because I did the disc assessment to understand that that part, I just don't have, that's not my strength. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to making sound decisions, Absolutely, I could do that for all of y'all. It's just for me that I can't do it. But because I, I try to make sure that everything is graceful and kind, because when you have ADHD and anxiety, everybody ain't always that nice to you. Right. When you talk too much, right, when you were the one that got in trouble when you were in school because you wouldn't shut up and you can't stop fidgeting and you're moving around, you know what it feels like for people to not be kind. So I do my best to overextend and be able to say, hey, are you okay? Let's walk through the process, like the conversation we were having just before that. Like, yep. let's just be proactive on the front. Here's a solution for it, a peaceful solution. But when it comes to that, the the deep, yeah, I, I don't have anything for myself. But but it also helps me with understanding that I don't have to be everything. I can find somebody to fill in these blanks for me. I've assessed the fact that, yeah, I, mm -mm, I don't, this isn't good for me. So I need somebody in these spaces. So whether it's on the personal side or it's on the business side. And on the business side, I've hired an amazing, brilliant team. Stephanie Brinkley is my right and my left she, hand. Listen, she is amazing. a rock star. When I say I prayed for this girl, this grown, I prayed for her. Because I needed somebody that one could understand and work with me and know, A, some days I just can't get out of bed, bro. So I'm going to need you to go ahead and take this over. <laughs> but also know that there's a level of discernment that you need when you're working with entrepreneurs. Because many of us have ADHD. So the, the level of care and, and white glove service that you're able to provide to have the discernment between if I need to get on you and say you didn't turn in your homework or what's going on? How, how are you feeling? Because this may be a prayer day versus a fuss at you day. Mm. So I prayed to have somebody on my team because when it came to that part, I didn't have it. So I have to find other people that fill in the blanks. But I learned that about me as a person from the disc assessment that you did. So thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, it was. I remember you being really anxious about it. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like, it doesn't have to be that. Like, this is actually a blessing. You just and you being so much into systems. I'm like, you could easily just drop this into the, the infrastructure and the workflow that you have and make it run seamlessly. I watch you do it. I watch you do it with everybody else. Yep. One of the things that you said that I think is really important for uh, somebody listening, there's a mother out there and what I caught was you gave yourself permission to like, like let go of the concept of balance. Yeah. I tell people all the time because people get upset with me because they're like, you're so tunnel vision and you're so focused and you act like you can't multitask. No, multitasking doesn't exist. Come on, God. It's not real. Like, there's research on this. Multitasking isn't real, okay? Really what, what people call multitasking is your brain having to switch back and forth between tasks. Yes. You're not really doing both at the same time. You're, you're putting your brain in a, a blender, really. So you basically said, listen, this this whole balancing act, this um, role, this thing that I'm supposed to do as a mother and a black woman running a business, seven-figure business, this is not sustainable. I'm going to release myself and give myself permission to design life in a way that works for me my business, and my baby, right? Mm -hmm. So talk about what that, like in that moment after your daughter said that to you, what clicked and then what were those steps? Because now I want you to start talking about how you put the systems and the, and the structure in place for your personal life and your business because I know there's somebody's daughter out there, somebody's mama that has got, she, she got tears in her eyes and she want to, take notes 
So well, that's a good start that you take a note because that's one of the steps is okay. making sure you're documenting. So in in that moment on that day, um, after she said it, I had to. Mm -hmm. oh, oh my God. It was heartbreaking for me, but she's just sitting there with the bright eyes because she's the nicest kid. Like, I'm waiting on an actual answer, though. And I'm like, no, you're the most important person in the whole world. And I was like, I, I shut my laptop. I turned my phone off for the first time since 2007. I'm not talking about letting my phone die. I'm talking about powering the phone off. And I was like, let's go to the zoo. And I have a picture, and I love it. And we went to the zoo, and we walked around, and all she kept saying was, look, Mommy, you can hold both my hands because I didn't have a phone in my hand. Mm. And I'm like, Jesus, how long has she been feeling like this? Because you're only five, four or five years old, and you're still speaking in first person. Like, I'm overwhelmed by how much you've realized and recognized that I'm not doing a good job at being present for you. We get back to the house. I put her in the bather, put her in the bed, give her all the hugs and loves, and go into the kitchen and I howled like on my knees, broken up with my hands over my, like begging God to tell me what to do and give me direction. I heard one word. Um, it was hypocrite. And so I could see it, you know, the old school Bibles, uh, Jesus words were being read. Right. Mm -hmm. So I could see it clear as day because the things that people pay me millions of dollars to do, I was not doing for myself. Mm. Yep. And I was like, oh, I need to put systems in my in place for me, because for as much as I force everybody and create the documentation and the SOPs and the work floors and the org, org chart and all the documentation that you need to be able to hire people. I had not done that for myself at all. Only everybody else's business. I'd never written my own SOPs. They're all in my head. I'm telling you to get it out of your head, but I hadn't gotten it out of mine. And so because nobody can do it like me, nobody can balance the fact that I run a whole entire separate government contracting company in addition to the one that people see public facing is Entrepreneur Life Global. Nobody can do both of those. So my prayer was give me the guidance to be able to make the right decision on what to focus on and what I need to be able to delegate. Allow me to do what I do for everybody else for myself. And the next morning I got up and I started writing out every single process that was in my head. It took me almost six months mm. to get everything out. Cause you got to think these are two totally separate businesses. They have different policies. They have different procedures. They have different workflows. They have different employees. They have different team members. They have a different culture. My culture over here at entrepreneur life global is we love God, veterans, women, and minorities for the government. How do we make as much money as we possibly can and have a great reputation? So that way I can funnel this money back into the black community, right? Two different cultures. So I have to be able to switch my mind off to go between both of these and how I'm serving. And now you want me to train somebody? You, you want me to do the same thing that I tell everybody else to do? <laughs> Absolutely not. So it took me about six months to get all of the stuff out of my head. I didn't take on any new clients. I didn't do anybody else's business stuff. I closed and finished out everybody's projects that I was working on. Head down every day, documenting. My daughter come home, phone is down. I'm looking you in your eyes. Because I now recognize the moments where you would come over and accidentally close my laptop. Or that you would try and do this from over the top of my laptop. Because I had and three and of them at the time. Attention. Three laptops and a screen. So I'm working like this. So she would come in and she'd bring her chair in and she would read her books right in front of me. And I'm like, gosh, you got to be quiet. This is just you trying to get attention because mommy's not giving it to you. And I feel like you're getting it because you're in the same house as me. Right? So on that, after I finished writing everything, I was like, okay, who do I need to delegate this to? Who could be responsible enough for this? Now, I'm making good money, so now I can afford to hire it, which I know most people are not. So we're going to start. We can get to that next. Mm -hmm. So um, I wrote out all the roles that I knew that I needed, and I matched them. I matched them with the tasks that needed to be done. Then I looked at what had to be done by me versus what could be done by somebody else. Then I extracted all of the tasks that I was doing that wasn't generating income or creating impact in my community. I removed those and ditched them. And then I just focused on the ones that I had to. That's why I just started doing all the full systems development. Mm. So that way, by the time I hired my team, I already had all the processes written out and documented. Now I could properly train you. I trained Stephanie for three years before she ever said one word on the phone. She'd been with me for five. So when people are like, three years. Yeah, never said one word. She did all the notes. 
She did all the documentation on the back end. You know, we have more people on the team besides that, but she would manage the projects and those that were doing actually writing SOPs. But she didn't get on the calls like that. Saying anything? Absolutely not. Third year, I was like, what are you trying to do? She was like, I want to do strategy. Bet. Let's go do it. So me being able to take the time to train, making sure I had to be able to pay somebody to be able to do it, all of this came because I stopped what I was doing and actually wrote it out and then determined what didn't have to be me. That's not, that's not my calling. My calling isn't to write SOPs. My calling is to make sure that people that look like me actually can rest and give their brain a break. For people that look like me that have had, whether it's trauma in their life, which totally PTSD is already over the top when it comes to people that look like us, right? Yep. Because I know you've had this trauma, because I know your grandma told you not to write down these recipes, because I, t I know that your mama told you we don't tell our business out here in these streets, because I know that your uncles told you not to say anything, because I know all of these things, I know you're not documenting this. While you're in the middle of being, running a business that you will never be able to pass down to your kids, how can I create and help you get to where you need to be if I can't do that for myself? And all of that started with getting it out of my head documenting it and saying, this is what I'm responsible for. This is what God called me to do. This is why Connie does the CEO calls when I get to talk to the owners of the company. Cause I don't need to talk with the admin to pull the information from her. I need to talk to you because you're the one that's ready to jump off a bridge because you're the one that's leading the people. So on my job description, I'm responsible for that. Cause that is what I'm called to do. I'm called to focus on the mental health side of the CEOs while my company is able to focus on creating operational systems for our creative entrepreneurs. Mm. That's so it sounds like it came out of necessity. You, you kind of like scratched your own itch. Yeah. Right. But you you gave yourself permission to do this. I heard like, yeah, there's a couple because there's some taboo stuff. It's one. You, you, you got to multitask to. It's OK for you to have a a, a housekeeper. Oh, child. It's OK for you to have a chef. It's OK yes. for you to let somebody else do those things. It's OK. One of the biggest things that I see and and. To be quite honest, me and my sister were having this conversation. Um, you know, my mother having to manage so much and do so much. The one thing about all of her children, we all struggle with receiving. Allowing ourselves to receive things. We will give and give and give and give and pour out of the cup till it ain't nothing there. But if it takes for us to receive something, tragic, we can't do it. And so these systems allow us to get out of our own way, frees us up because one, it's not about you. Mm -mm. The, the infrastructure is in place so this thing can run so we can go serve who we need to serve. But also, like you said, we can pass this thing down. We can participate in our children's lives. We can have a healthy, right? So like the whole self-care thing, like people, I mean, I laugh, I mean, because I know, <laughs> but Connie be uh, in a robe on a beach with some champagne, just go. chilling. Doom, doom, doom. I'm the and people are like, how? Because I have systems in you place. You put systems in place to give you the freedom to do whatever it is that you want. Exactly. But it started with you giving yourself permission to do so. Yep. And, and, and giving myself permission as a black woman who grew up hearing your hands not broke. Right? No, you go clean the kitchen. Oh, why would I pay somebody to go and do it? And I'm going to be quick. If I, if my housekeepers, they come every other week, sometimes every week, I pay them $150. They take six hours to clean the house. Sometimes it's two, sometimes it's four of them. But I have a basement. It's a 3,500 square foot house. Basement, middle level, four rooms. And I am a five-year-old when it comes to laundry and clothes and stuff, forgetting everything <laughs> everywhere. I'm totally five. So if it takes, let's say three, because it's either two or four. Let's say it takes three people six hours to clean this entire house after I've destroyed it over two weeks. How long do you think it would take me to do that? So let's just say in those six hours, let's just pretend like I make $100 an hour, which I make more than that yeah. clearly. But let's just pretend I made $100 an hour. 100 times six is $600. So I could either work for six hours and make $600, or I could pay a team of three women to come in and clean my entire house for six hours, 150 bucks. I'm losing $450 by cleaning my house. Mm, Come on, a, that's God. That's a paradigm shift right there. Yeah. So, so, and that is the permission because we're told, you know, this is what women do. These are your roles. You cook, you clean, you whatever, whatever. So, I, hey, 
you you got two choices. You either want me to go in here and go do this and, and wash these dishes and these baseboards, or you want to hop on this call and take this fifty thousand dollar client, and then that's going to go towards our children's future. That's going to go towards our vacations. That's going to go towards putting the pool in the backyard. That's going to go to your new golf clubs. You see what I'm saying? So you have to. It's the it's the permission to say. The things that I was raised on, a lot of the, the things that we were raised on were by parents that also had their own different trauma, right? They had their own relationship problems. They had their own financial problems. They had their own mental health problems. So for them, they were telling us things in order to protect us from mm-hmm. what they went through. So all these women that are my age, we were told, don't worry about no man. Go to school, go get your job so you can take care of yourself. You just need to get an education so you don't have to depend on a man for anything. And what that did was create a whole generation of women that I don't need a man for nothing. I don't need no man because that's what we were taught by a generation of women who were going through things and had all these kids and they couldn't leave even if they wanted to because they didn't have any money to do it. Mm -hmm. So then they taught them that, right? My, my prayer is that this generation, which is why I pour so much into the systems part that this generation of women, we grew up looking at our kids saying, "Mm, yeah, I don't want you to have that trauma. Mm, no, I don't care what happened with me and your father. I want you to have a happy marriage. So when you, when somebody's like, oh, uh, uh-uh, men are bubble. No, men are great. There are amazing men out here. I don't care what everybody else says. There are really great men out here. 12 year old daughter who plans to get married and have children and travel the world with her family. No, I'm going to make sure that I enforce that there are good people that are going to love you. They're going to be kind to you. Will you go through some things? Probably, but there are good men out here. I'm not going to pass on the trauma that I've gone through to my daughter because guess what? She's going to go raise kids. And one day she's going to be sitting in a podcast and having a conversation. And imagine her saying, my mom taught me to hate men. My Mm. mom taught me that this is how you treat men. My mom taught me that you don't have to do any of these things and you don't need no man for anything. That's where the generational trauma comes from. I'm not trying to create that. I want to create the generational wealth and the wealth isn't just financial. It's love. That's time. That's being able to, to have the freedom to spend time with your family. And one of the biggest problems that I've he- that I hear, especially with black women, once they get into my program and they start reading, they're like, oh my God, I hired one person and it gave me back six hours a week. That six hours is what I went to go to my child's game. Now I got to go to PTA meetings. Now I got to go get my nails done, girl, because I look crazy. And that little piece of that little glimmer of hope, once you sow that seed and you, you get a little t- you look Taste of that good life right there. You're like, yeah, I don't ever want to go back. I don't ever want to get to a place where I, I can't afford to spend time with my children. Mm. So for us, you have to give yourself permission. You have to be, be able to identify who you are as a person to figure out what you're not good at and what your strengths are, which again, I feel like the disc assessment is exactly what that does to be able to say, this is my strength. All of these, not my strength, baby. I'm, I'm not a hundred on all of these. This is my strength. I need to hire everybody else for the rest of them where my weaknesses are. But first you have to be able to say and acknowledge that this is not what it is. Here's where I'm struggling. What are the, what are the processes I can put in place? Cause we understand systems in life without understanding their systems. So if you, you look at it, let's, let's use uh, hair. You know what the process is. If you're going to go get your hair braided, you already know what to expect. You know, it's going to take you 12 hours. You know how much you're going to pay. You know, there's going to be kids running around. You already know what that process is, but that is a process. So in your mind, you've made decisions based on what's going to happen, how long it's going to take, who's going to pick up my child from school because I won't be able to do it. These are all systems. They're just a system in your personal life. You have to be able to take that same mindset and that same process and apply it to the business. So that way you can get free. So that way you can spend time with your family. So that way you aren't having an anxiety attack. That way your edges aren't falling out. That way you get to spend time with your spouse and your husband who's mad at the fact that he ain't seen you and you'd be too tired at night to be able to look at him with, in his eyes. All of those things root from creating systems that give you the freedom to be able to live the life that God wanted you to live. Listen, you may, you personally, I'm a, I'm a 99 D I don't really have too much. C. I, you know, I kind of just make it happen. You made me a believer in systems and I watch you live it every single day. And it's amazing to see. Thank you. So, uh, we need to get out of here. Yeah. Um, I talk too much. That's another ADHD thing. I no, tried to tell you. No, you good. You good. We need to get out of here. So I just, you know, again, in the spirit of Mental Health Awareness Month, in the spirit of loving up on black women, right, black mommies, what would be your final words to them? 
Like, what would you charge them with as we, we, we get up out of this conversation? I charge you, my beautiful black women, with finding something on your many, 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 many paged list of things you have to do and find one thing that you don't have to do that you could delegate to somebody else. I want you to find whatever that thing is, and I want you to write out how you want it done. I, w- I don't care if it's just washing dishes and you're delegating it to your son. This is how I want you to wash dishes. This is how I want you to load the dishwasher. This is how I want you to clean the kitchen. Because if I say go clean the kitchen and I come in here and it's still dishes sitting in the, in the dishwasher, they washed, but they're not put away. You know, let me explain all this process. So now that's just one task less that you have to do that has your mind and your heart and your time tied up to where now you could say, I have an extra hour. In that extra hour, I don't care if it's an extra 30 minutes, do something for yourself even if it's just sitting quietly by yourself, because these kids be talking, they talk more than I do, God bless. <laughs> but find the one thing that you could delegate so that way even if those few minutes, those few moments of time that you get to taste, get to taste what it feels like to have just a little bit of freedom and a little bit of peace for yourself, and then from that you'll get a flavor for it. Now you'll get a yearning for it. Now it's like, oh, my God, I got to get that again. What else on this list can I take off? What else can I delegate? And then you'll have the strength to be able to say, I don't have to do it all myself because you don't, black lady. I've been through that. My clients have been through it. My friends have been through it. My family have been through it. And I've watched generations of women that are living in exhaustion and then waiting to the end of their life to say, I never got to travel. I never got to take my child to Paris. I never got to do these things because I was so busy doing tasks, which most of those tasks were not tasks you should have been responsible for. No, that's right. So that would be my charge. Find one thing, just one, even if it's dishes, if it's laundry, if you're normally the one that does laundry and you got kids that know how to stand on their feet, have one of these kids going to do this laundry. (laughs) If it's, I need to hire a laundry company to come in. If it's going to cost me a hundred dollars for you to come and get this laundry, bring it back, fold it or five hours of me doing it. Assess how much money that costs. Assess how much money you make, even if it's at your job, how much money am I making versus losing by me doing it? And then delegate that thing, get off you. Be free, honey, of all the things that that your parents and your grandma taught you, honey. Be free of that because you don't have to do those things anymore. You can hire somebody, and there is somebody out there that that's their thing. They love it. They love it. The ladies that clean my house, they turn on the uh, mariachi music. They be getting it. They be in the kitchen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They lo- they absolutely love it. So they come. They bring me gifts all the time because that is their gift. This is mine. Mm. Respect whatever your gift is and allow other people to do what is their gifting and in their grace. So oh, that's I, lo- I love that. Connie, let the let the let the let the people know where they can connect with you. Oh my God. So if you're a cute boy, you can oh, sorry, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say clip that out, but don't, just in case there is one out there. Hey. Uh, <laughs> so you can find me anywhere at Connie S. Falls. Connie S. Falls. Don't forget the S, you don't forget the Z and J Z. I know that's right. And y'all know me. I'm the one with Tungo and everything. Um, I really enjoyed this conversation, Connie. Thank me you. too. It's like our regular conversations. Absolutely. Just with cameras. And Just stuff. with cameras and mics. All right. We out of here. Peace. Bye.